Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be editing a food photography photo or a photo of a muffin, some food, and we're just going to have some fun. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'll kind of talk you through that. So that way uh, you can think about if you are photographing food or you have the desire to photograph food, you know what you can do with it inside of On One Photo Raw. As usual, if you find value in today's content, please smash that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I do post content fairly regular on photo editing software. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the content. All right, so here we are inside of the computer. As I said before, we're editing a photo of a muffin. And this is a photo I shot back in 2019. I was using my Nikon D5200. So this is a prime example of gear does not matter. I think this is a great looking photo and I've used this on a lot of different things. Uh, I did edit this previously or originally in Lightroom. And now here we are in Photoshop, or I'm sorry, in On One, not Photoshop. And we're going to go ahead and edit this photo because I think that it's going to be really, really cool. The first thing that I like to do with my food photography is really just take a look at it. Now, this was all shot with natural light, by the way. Uh, there was a window like over here to the top right. And that's why there's all these hot spots and you can see the shadows being cast over here. So if you don't know how to read an image, uh, it's always a good idea to find where your shadows are in the image and then find where the light is coming from or vice versa. Uh, the shadows are always on the opposite side that the light is being produced. So you can see that this is bright over here and then the shadow is over here. This is really important in food photography because we need the food to kind of pop off of the two-dimensional canvas or the two-dimensional space that it lives in inside of a photo because food itself is this three-dimensional thing and we can rationalize that in our brains but if it doesn't look like that in the photo then it's going to look really flat and not desirable at all so angle and lighting really does make a huge huge uh it, it makes a food fo photo when you get into the edit, it's really important to stay natural, all right? What we don't want to do is something like this. That is not natural. Now, of course, if you're doing like an energy drink or something that's crazy, uh, you know, crazy full of edginess, if that's even a way of putting that, then sure, by all means, go for it. Uh, but what we want to do is be more realistic so that way it's appetizing because the goal here is I want you to want this blueberry muffin uh, with the nice little sugar pieces on the top of it. Uh, I see a little piece here that I don't think it needs to be there. I'm not quite sure what it is. There's a few of them throughout. To me, that doesn't really sell the image because it just doesn't fit into the story. Like, I don't know what that is. There's not many of them. Uh, so it doesn't seem like it belongs there like the sugar does. So I need to get rid of it. That's where the retouching tool comes in. And I personally just use the little perfect eraser here and I make it about the size, just a little bit larger than the item. I zoom in to do this, by the way, and then I just click one time. On one is going to think itself through and then it's going to get rid of that little piece. Now, in Photoshop, you can use a healing brush. We're in on one. So I'm using the perfect eraser and this works great for this type of image. All right. And that's the reason why I do it. So and then there's one over here. We'll get rid of that. I don't think anyone would see this, but when it comes to food photos, like you want it to look as good as it possibly can. Let me go ahead and zoom us out. So I'll hit command and zero and that should zoom us out, but it didn't. So I'm just going to click fit down here at the bottom uh, tool well. And I'm just looking through here. I see another one right here. So let's go back into retouch and let me zoom in just a little bit here. I'll make this a little bit larger and I'll click right there. I think that that's going to come out just fine and all should be well. So now we can go ahead and click fit. That'll zoom us back out. And I think everything looks pretty good. Now, the next thing that I would recommend you do 
is come to the retouching tool and then click this little eyeglasses thing. This is going to let you visualize dust. And I don't think I had a dirty sensor, but I have photographed food in the past where I had a sensor spot and I didn't realize it. Um, I couldn't find that photo because that's what I wanted to show you. But this particular image doesn't have any sensor spots that are blatantly standing out. So it works. This is just a great tool to be able to see where issues could be in your image. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I think I'm actually good here. And I'll hit the little checkbox or check mark. And that brings us back into the editing bay. And now we can really begin. So inside of Photo Raw 2024, we have Brilliance AI. If you've caught any of my videos, I always recommend that you start with Brilliance AI. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm not saying Brilliance AI is the end all be all. And this is where you should stop. In fact, I don't think you should stop at just Brilliance AI. Uh, and you could also use it as a tool to teach you what needs to be modified. We'll let this think itself through. And this brings us to this type of image. And remember I, I mentioned before, you want to be careful with colors in food photography because uh, the color of the food is what makes it appetizing. In this particular instance, I'm not sure if I like what the color modification from Bruins AI did. So what I'll do is pull down on the color amount all the way. And I like the natural light look, but I know that the colors need to be enhanced a little bit. And I think that's where I may need to do that in the effects module or at a bare minimum in local adjustment. Um, but if I pull up on the color amount just a little bit here, I think that that's working quite well. I do enjoy what it did with the tones. I think that that works out really, really good. I don't need to do much else with that. But the color, I wasn't a fan of that being at 100%. And so we'll just go with that. So now that I have my tone and color the way that I want it to, the next thing that I want to look at inside of a food photo is how much noise is there going to be in the shot? I was at one second with a hundred ISO. So I'm not worried about noise in this particular image, but that is something you should start to look at after you get your base, your global exposure, you should look at how much noise you have in your image. Now, the beauty of Brilliance AI is it will usually turn on AI auto, or I'm sorry, not AI auto, it will turn on no noise AI for you. And that is a good place to get started and modifying your overall image. However, I don't need it for this image, so we're going to move on. Next step is local adjustments. Now, with local adjustments on food, it's really honing the eye into the area that you want. And this is where I think dodging and burning really can be helpful here. Now, whenever I dodge and burn food, I like to build up my effect. So I'm going to be painting with a low opacity uh, starting out and then I'll just build it up. So I'm going to pull down on or not the feather on the opacity and I'll go probably about 30. I think that that's a good starting point. And this is just going to be a way for me to really start developing contrast and making the food pop again. That three-dimensional aspect in food photography is so, so critical. And, you know, if you ever look at a photo of food, you'll notice that there's very well-defined shadows and very well-defined highlights. And that's where dodging and burning comes in. I think that if you're going to spend time on a food photo, dodging and burning is where you want to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is just start with a negative exposure here, and I'm just going to right over the shadows. And this should be subtle. If you go heavy handed right out the gate, it's going to be hard to really build an elegant um, and realistic looking food photo. And so we'll come across here um, and make your 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 brush strokes fairly large. The reason you want to be fairly large is because it'll fall off a little bit more naturally in the image and you can see that just in this one little area like i feel like this should just be a darker space um you can see over here 
the transition between the darkest area to the brightest area did not happen as well. And that's just because I personally uh, had too small of a brush. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase this section. And I think that, you know, even with just erasing that a little bit makes it more natural. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because if I if I do that, then, you know, I'll be making things overly perfect and missing the point of just teaching or sharing my ideas of editing uh, inside of on one editing food photos inside of on one. And that's what I really want to do. Now, the bottom of this photo does not really need to be uh, as bright because it's the bottom of the photo. This is the star of the photo. These are the co-stars and this is the backup singer, all right, or backup dancer. These areas don't need to be as bright. So I'm just going to paint over this a few times and then look at just the difference in that. Uh, and then I'll paint down here at the bottom, just over the bottom, right? Because I'm responsible for directing the viewer's eye to the thing that I want them to view. And it's this right here. All right. And I'm doing this with a brush. You could do this with radial gradients. You could do this with a linear gradient gradient. I just like uh, using the brush personally. So we'll just kind of click through here. And I think that that gets us where we need to be with our burning. Let me go ahead and turn this off and on. So I turn this off and I turn it on and you can see, you know what? I think I'll just burn this area right here a little bit more as well. So that way, the whole idea of this uh, backup dancer muffin is just casting a shadow over here. It's realistic. It would have been something that you could see. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see what's actually happening. And I think that this looks pretty good. So we'll call this burn. And then we'll hit add adjustment. This time I want to actually dodge a little bit and I'm going to go when whenever I dodge, I typically go less of an adjustment than I do with the burn um, because making things brighter can really mess up the image. I think uh, that's just a personal thing, but darker things usually aren't a problem. You know, it's like when you increase the whites in an image. They really stand out. But if you decrease the blacks or increase the blacks, make those darker, it doesn't really stand out and it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so that's why I make a less aggressive highlight adjustment or um, dodge adjustment. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to paint over some of these highlight areas and I'm making sections of the photo brighter just so there's interest. Now, I don't think I'm going to actually paint on the board like I did in the uh, dodge effect. In fact, I may come back, or I'm sorry, in the burn effect. I think I may go back to the burn effect and darken this board a little bit uh, because then that allows these berries to really shine through. And, you know, this is where you start to make that separation between a snapshot of food and a food photo. Now, I'm no like world renowned or super professional food photographer. Uh, I have photographed food for clients in the past. And, you know, these are just the techniques that I've used, uh, as well as watching some people who um, who are professional food photographers. And that's what they do. Now, I'm not going to open up the shadow area on this side of the image primarily because, again, the light is coming from this direction and hitting our main subject. I want to capitalize on the light hitting on the main subject. So I'm going to go with a larger brush, and that's about as big as I can get. And I'm just going to gently make a few passes over the top portion. And you can see how bright that's getting. If I turn, and really, if I show you this, this is what I did. Those don't look very good without reference to the actual photo. But if I turn this off and on, you can see how that's just like ever so slightly making this photo look a little bit more three dimensional. It's looking a lot better. Now, whenever I do my highlight adjustment and or my dodging adjustment, I'm going to make this dodge one because 
uh, I realized I just did something that I didn't necessarily intend to do, uh, which was make my main subject dodge on the same layer that I made my uh, co-subject dodge. All right. So what I need to do now is actually structure or sharpen this area. The areas that I'm making more known to the viewer that I want them to look there, I want those to be sharper. I'm going to paint over this area a few times because I want this sharpening effect to really uh, come through. And I'm going to pull down on the blacks. It's darkening that area way more than I want it to, but that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is push up on the structure here, and it's a perceived level of contrast, uh, which, you know, I can even push up on the contrast here as well. Uh, the problem with that is you see this isn't as bright as this section anymore. I don't like that idea because I want this area to be brighter. Uh, now, I guess, you know, just what you could do, I can push up there and then I can push up on my exposure. But the exposure starts to really blow things out. So I don't like that. Maybe I'll push up on the midtones and open up the shadows in this area. So that way there's less shadows. But now... That just doesn't look good. I'm going to get rid of the contrast, get rid of the black and the midtones and the shadow. What I may do is just push up on the exposure and the highlights, and that looks pretty decent. So if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see it's just that area. It gives it a little bit more oomph, attention, and emphasis. And so this is what we came into the editing bay with, and I think it looks good. And this is where we've gotten so far. That's purely with the develop and the local adjustment. What effects can we add to modify a food photo? The first effect that I would gravitate towards is probably a lens blur. And I just really, I have found that I enjoy the lens blur. Again, knowing that this is my main subject, I'm going to hit the letter M to get my masking bug. And I'm going to create a vignette. I'll click right here on the subject and just kind of reshape this and fit it to make it make sense for this subject. All right. And then I'll fade this into the image. So now if I turn this off, if I turn this off and on, it's very subtle. So let me make it more emphasized. Pull up on there. So now if I turn this off and on, you can see that it's blurring everything outside of it, um, which is kind of what I want to do. I like that idea. And it's emphasizing the main subject. Like we can see the blueberries back here and we know that they're there. You're focusing more over here. And the reason why I enjoy using the lens blur effect versus the blur is because I can brighten or I can modify the brightness. So it's almost like I'm adding vignetting uh, into the lens. So if I pull this down now, I'm really honing the eye into this thing. I didn't have to create a vignette outside of the uh, outside of this one tool. So with one tool, I can do tone adjustments as well as stylistic creative blur adjustments. That's why I use the lens blur for something like this. Then what I can do is probably go with uh, maybe a curves adjustment layer. You know, curves is just a classic adjustment uh, and, and you can mess around with really honing in the tone. Uh, I would just mess with the tone aspect here, maybe pulling down on the mids just a bit and then pulling down on the shadows just a bit. I don't like what it's doing to the color. That's where I would click this gear icon to get my properties. And then instead of the blend mode being on normal, I would just go to luminosity. So that way it's not changing the colors. It's only changing the luminance values of the overall image. Turning this off and turning it on, it just makes it look more cinematic, more punchy. But if that's not what you want to go with, then you can just pull that up. That's one curves adjustment treatment that I would give to a food photo like this. Another one, I'll just go ahead and add in a second curve, is I'll come over to the blues and I would actually... Uh, modify this and make it a little bit more warm. And I'm just trying to figure out where 
that ought to be. And then I would just bring the shadow areas back into the blue tone. Uh, again, that just makes this particular muffin look a little bit more golden brown. Uh, and then, of course, I can come into curves uh, and then I will invert the mask using my brush. I would move the opacity up on this one because I want it to actually impact the image. We'll go with 100. I'll click paint and I'm just going to click. I'm not actually painting it like a brush. I'm just clicking and painting. So it's only in certain areas. So if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see it's only in certain areas and it's not very intense, but it's something that's subtle. It works for this image. Your image, it may not work so much for. And then, of course, if I wanted to, I could do the same thing to the blueberries. And I like to work in curves. It's just fun. Uh, you don't have to work in curves. What I would do is just push up on the blues here a little bit, probably pull the shadows back down, maybe even increase in the highlight section because the blueberries are more in the light than they were. Uh, you know, I guess the muffin wasn't in the shadow as much either. Um, but nonetheless, we'll just say that the blueberries, they had more light hitting them, even though they didn't. We'll invert that. And what I want to do is I'll hold down the option key and this should allow me to paint, but it's not. So I'm just going to click on paint, make my brush size a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to click on each of these blueberries and watch them just kind of come to life in the image. And maybe I won't do that for all of them. Maybe I'll only do that for the brightest blueberries that are in the photo. Uh, and then there's purple here. So maybe does how does that look? Uh, I don't like it there. Now, if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see it's only impacting those blueberries. I can even come over here and maybe make them a little bit brighter. Don't like that. So maybe I can contrast them a little bit, make a little S curve. I could, I could do all kinds of stuff. The goal here was really just to show you, you know, we can go from something that looks like this to something that looks a little bit more uh, appropriate. Hopefully it's not a over the top type of edit. It's just something that makes more sense and it's natural. So hopefully you found some value in today's video. If you did, please smash the like button. It just helps YouTube get this into the hands or the eyes of people who would find some value in editing a food photo inside of On One Photo Raw. I'd love to hear your comments or the ways that you would go about editing a food photo. You know, let me know in the comment section. Have you ever shot food photography uh, either personally or professionally? And if so, how did it come out? Have you tried editing a food photo inside of On One? I'd love to hear that in the comment section below. If you want to pick up On One Photo Raw 2024 or any other photo raw or On One products, you can save some money by using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 when you check out. If you support me in that way, I greatly appreciate you. But if not, that's okay too. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.